So welcome, Ben Catley, to One Space Love. It's beautiful to have you on. How are you going today? I'm very well, thanks. Very well. How are you doing? You're pouring a cup of tea. <laughs> the tea is poured. It is steeping, and I am hoping oh. it's steep. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank goodness. For Hol- wholesome morning. <laughs> yeah. I can't start my day. I'm on a, a cleansing. I'm eating very clean at the moment, um, oh, but I love my cup of tea in the morning. Not that that, you know, that's my ritual in the morning. I just love a good cup of tea. What kind of tea are we talking well, about? Yeah, I know I like all tea, but I have to, I like to start my day with an English breakfast. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be, I don't like Earl Grey. It has to be English breakfast. It looks like we yeah. could, we're having a bit of a sponsor segment here. Should we mention a brand? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Yeah, I know. Um, ben, can you introduce yourself to the listeners by finishing the statement, I am? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I am. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I am content. Um, is is how I'd answer that currently, um, <laughs> without being too um, thinking on it too much. But yeah, I guess I'm just pretty content where I am um, at the moment. Um, in a space of being pretty grateful, I guess, um, with where I've got my music to, but also um you know being in being in perth um lack of lockdown and stuff at the moment and uh, it's it's very it's a pretty privileged place to be currently um mm. so yeah i don't know i feel gen- genuinely quite content in life at the moment with my tea and stuff mm. and that's um i mean perth i have not been to perth but friends of mine just relocated from sydney to perth and i feel like it is a blessed place to be right now mm. yeah it is. It's lovely, and it's it's sunny again today, which is nice. It's been pretty stormy and and windy here for a bit, um, but yeah, it's it's a great spot to be in at the moment. But um, beautiful. You know, never know when. Never never know when it might catch up to what's going on with the rest of the world here. I don't know. Yeah, all we can do is stay in this moment. Indeed. So Indeed. unknown. We've learnt about uncertainty and unknown. Now, mm. I know your accent does not sound like to me. Just when I was listening to you talk, it does not sound like you're from England. But I, I, from my research, I know that you were you grew up in England, and mm. now you're living in Australia because you you fell in love with Australia. So let's go back to England. Where exactly mm. did you grow up, and when did you pick up music into your you know everyday life? Um, I grew up on the uh, the cold shores of um, northeast England, um, mm-hmm. just below the Scottish border, in a place called Newcastle, a coastal town, um, Tymouth, North Shields area. Um, yeah, and I, I picked up the guitar when I was about eight years old um, and pretty much self-taught. I had a few lessons when I was about, I don't know, I did a couple of lessons at school, even though I didn't really pay attention. Um, and then when I was about 14, I had a, f- a few lessons um which was cool because it, it was a guy that I, I mean my mum probably might end up hearing this but I, I, we never really learned much music in those lessons um <laughs> going I would pay my 10 pounds when my mum gave me to go and um go and get half an hour guitar lessons but I was just so intrigued by him as a person and what he did with music that we ended up just talking about like all the cool stuff he did and yeah we, I learned some guitar um but I don't know it was just more I don't know experience I was kind of getting from him I guess um so it was very beneficial either way so was he a a, a, you know an an older figure for you that was actually living and and doing music in his lifestyle like that is that what inspired you yeah yeah I think so he was um uh yeah music was his, his full work and he was a teacher in a high school I think but he played in bands and quite mm-hmm. successful bands and he played different instruments but his guitar was his main instrument and um I, I do a bit of kind of tapping on the guitar and he, that was the, he was the first person uh, I saw do that and kind of inspired me to do some tapping there you go. um so yeah that, that was definitely a big turning point in my my style of guitar playing I think yeah mm. do you remember his name 
Yes, Peter Richardson. Yeah, I've tried to find him on Facebook and stuff. Have um, you? I thought that. Yeah, yeah just, I would just reach to out to him. Get in touch, but uh, yeah. I think I think it did years ago. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have to try and follow up though and just see what he's doing. I feel that yeah. would be send yeah. him a message of appreciation and thanks. I guess send yeah. the podcast to him. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. So then was it was it encouraged to you to that you could be a musician or was it was there something else that you thought I'm going to you know when when the children are asked as they get older in school what are you going to be when you grow up was it that you knew mm. you were going to be a musician or were you already trying to pocket yourself into something else to to yeah, accommodate to, I, mean, yeah. I only ever considered music as just just a hobby and yep. and something that I, that I really loved uh, I used to spend just hours and hours in my bedroom just playing and learning people's songs and playing along as a kid. Uh, but yeah, never considered it as a, a viable um, you know, business or source of income, I guess, um, until well, only the past five or six years, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I was younger, I was always into um, to art and design and things like that, which is kind of my original career. And I, I still freelance doing graphic design, um, which is how I... Um, how I managed to stay in Australia originally. Yeah. So it's oh, always kind of been in the creative space. Always been in the creative space, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Well, at least you were, you were able to express your creativity. Mm. Like, you know, for me, I did fashion and, and styling, but it was always yeah. something creative, you know? Um, yeah. Cool. But that's great that you were able to fall into something creative anyway. Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I love great. it. Yeah. And it's, and it helps. And it's another part of the puzzle that helps you to who you are today. Yeah. So, what was that initial point that brought you over, you know, that were you in, a, you know, that pulled you over to Australia? Was it just travel exploration or was there something in you that you that you felt there was any signs or any crossroads that brought you to Australia? Um, yeah, definitely had the, um, the, the travel um, desire for sure. Mm. Um, but I actually had a job that I really loved back in the UK before I came here um and it took it took a long time to get my head around quitting a job that I'd worked a while to get to like studied for um and it was like a, a good position in a like a good advertising design agency <clears throat> in the UK and I, it was so much fun like working in a, a design agency a d- design yeah. agency it was a lot of fun um and yeah it, I think it took me about two months to actually get my head around quitting um that place and it kind of taught me quite a lot I guess because it, it's it was a sign that I could actually remove myself from something that I loved and enjoyed and was you know getting getting paid for and stuff and and be able to move on and take it to an, another level and have more enjoyment and, and such um so it was it was a big um a big turning point in my life to to do that for myself um what do you think it was that yeah. that gave you the hunger to even consider leaving, you know, most, some people reach a position and at the top of the mountain in that career path and, and work, and then they get there and then they're like, I just have to keep staying. Like there's, they might have a little voice saying, you know, go here, but it's, mm. they listen to the voice that says, stay, you've, got, you've achieved this far, stay. Totally. What do you, yeah. Oh, I mean, and that's a totally understandable thing. And uh, I mean, I was I was definitely fighting with that voice a lot yeah. because you know you you work and you study to get somewhere and you're stoked with where you are, but then uh, I don't know. I had to have some um, some perspective and realize that if I stayed where I was, although it was great, um, I, I didn't see much growth over the next few years. Even mm-hmm. though it would be very comfortable, I could see some complacency creeping in, maybe, mm-hmm. which isn't good for creativity, especially in a creative field. So. Um, um, but I did have a, um, I had a girlfriend at the time who wanted to move to Australia uh, really badly. And um, <clears throat> I had an, an opportunity about a year previous that, um, uh, to that where I could have gone traveling at a good, a good point. Um, so yeah, it, it, when she wanted to go, it was a point where I was very comfortable. And, said, oh. and then it just got to a point where I had to mm-hmm. surrender to it and just say, all right, got to got to do it and just try I was 20 25 then 26 um see I knew that yeah I knew knew there was a woman sorry I spoke over you (laughs) I don't usually do that I'm off I'm not grounded today in lockdown um (laughs) and I'd admit that to all the listeners I I wanted to say that I felt there was a woman behind that decision so you came over together sorry I had to get it out of you You did no of course of course (laughs) um uh, yes, we came over together, um, and I think we 
we split up maybe three or four months after we arrived or something like, like I you, know, that. you hear, that, <laughs> hear that story many a times yeah but we just found ourselves on different paths and yeah yeah and so and I, going to that moment of being on your own now was this in WA mm. yep. yeah we we knew one person we knew in Perth and they said we could um, stay with them and for cheap rent and the, and the the British pound was useless against the Aussie dollar at the time and um, so any any um kind of opportunity of, of cheap rent was um highly valued so we came here and stayed in a little uh it was like someone's art room and um, we had a mattress on the floor and like surrounded by art supplies which was quite good um and just stayed there for a few months yeah and then that's ironic isn't it yeah surrounded by um, art <laughs> It was good, yeah. Lots of paints and such, and empty canvases. But um, and then, yeah, I just uh, I just found so much opportunity, and oh, I, I was just gen- generally stoked and and feeling pretty proactive and and hungry um, to kind of keep my keep my work ethic going a bit. Like I, I wanted to enjoy being here and kind of treat it like a holiday, but I also wanted to keep my work going and and um, yeah, managed to find some good freelance work doing the design stuff. But then started finding some music projects to get involved with. And then that's kind of what lit the mm. the fire of the solo artist kind of journey for me. Yeah. How long did it take for those, you know, wheels to turn when you were like, because you started off playing guitar with musicians. Mm. Yeah. What were some of the, because the, I love to see when we have our paths and I've had a very colourful life, there's little points on the path, little crumbs that lead us mm-hmm. to know, okay, I'm going to play music on my own. Um, Because another Uh, thing I heard was, you you know, you you started to recognise you like singing as well as playing guitar and then mm. you even auditioned for a rock band. All right, how do you know that? Because I'm a good researcher. And, you know, (laughs) ironically, I wasn't a good researcher at school, so don't always pay attention to what (laughs) school teachers tell you. Well, in in the same vein, I was a a useless singer and I still don't consider myself a a, a great singer, but that's, I guess, on your, to answer your question there, um, uh, yeah, I I remember trying to do backing vocals in bands that I was playing in and um, back in the UK, and it was just kind of like, oh no, okay, obviously singing's <laughs> not for me. I'm going to park that and just stick to the guitar because I'm comfortable and I feel confident yeah. of that. And um, but then when I came here, um, like I, I love like rock music and metal music uh, amongst all other kinds of, um, of, of more genres. Rock music. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and. I found myself singing in the car a lot to, to the rock music I was listening to. And then I saw on Gumtree when I was just thinking about every day I was, when I first arrived here, I was looking on Gumtree just to find bits of work and just little <laughs> opportunities and, you know, people, musos who wanted a jam and stuff like that. And I found this like hard rock metal band who were looking for a vocalist. I was like, all right, I messaged them anyway. And they sent me two of the demo tracks they want as um, vocals done too. Um, and I just demoed them at home. Um, and then I was, I wasn't, I was, kind of happy with them um, and they were keen to, to have a go anyway so we started rehearsing and we never actually played any gigs because we couldn't find a regular drummer um, which is often the way um, but it got me on the path of trying vocals anyway and singing and um, so it's like oh I'm really enjoying this so I just started finding um, like vocal um, tutorials and um, just just exercises really mm. uh, I've never really learned any any singing technique but just how to breathe and how to project and not burn my voice out um, yeah, which one of the best hints I got actually? Yeah, there was a, I remember seeing on Facebook there was a, a front man from a really famous metal band, um, and he was like, "Oh, I'm stuck in a, an airport somewhere in in the US. Uh, I've got an hour. Send me any questions you have on Twitter." Um, so I signed up to Twitter quickly because I don't think I, I had it. I still don't. Um, and asked him a question like, "Oh, what do you do for your voice not to burn out?" And sure enough, he replied and gave me um, a link to um, a vocal training exercise by Melissa Cross. She's called. I think it's called the Zen of Screaming. And it's um it's basically vocal exercises for for metal singers, which although I'm not a metal singer, I was I was just trying to do yeah. a lot of the projected like loud vocals. It's like, all right, let's give that a go. And that's the vocal exercise I've used pretty much every gig or before every recording studio for the last kind of five, six years or something. Um yes, yeah, so that was kind of my my short kind of path to learning how to sing, I guess. <laughs> mm. So I went from kind of believing that I was just like never able to sing at all to, to feeling now fairly comfortable to, comfortable. to sing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so playing in the heavy metal ba- band and then still doing the graphic arts and then meeting other musicians along the way, when did you start writing music or, or working with producers and making, you know, how long ago was that? 
Um, I started writing music pretty pretty young. I think I was about about twelve or thirteen when I started like playing around. Um, I remember having a like a four track tape um, yep. recorder back in the, like a Tascam um, back when I was about thirteen or something that I bought with some. Um, some money for my paper round perhaps I think <laughs> <laughs> oh the nostalgia bloody hell um, I, I was yeah I was having a nostalgic moment yesterday because we have so much time to think and I was sharing mm. on Instagram all the music you know that brought me to here and and just talking about the the mixtapes we used to receive from friends when they would record us oh. mixtapes and I just went down the Walkmans that my mind went to walking around with Walkmans and I had a beautiful oh. day in memory lane what, a, what romantic <laughs> things yeah mixtapes oh, I remember making mixtapes for a girl once yeah and I just I couldn't I couldn't think of a more grand romantic gesture I said then. it was that's what I wrote <laughs> on my post I said it is actually still to this day one of the most romantic gifts you could give me so I'm just putting that message out there <laughs> to, to the universe. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Send t- Steph mixed yeah, tapes. Yeah, please. <laughs> we'll mix something. Um, uh, blushing now. Oh, yes, right. So writing yeah. writing music, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tascam mix, um, recording tapes. Um, and then, yeah, um, but, yeah, recorded with bands, but in the UK. Um, but then as a solo artist, um started recording about I think I released my first thing back in 2014 um, and I've used a few different producers around around Perth um, but there's one one guy that I use mostly Pavement. that I'm super comfortable with yeah Pavement yeah so Studios, I go on Midland yeah. hmm. I go on with Lance Robinson at Pavement Studios um, mostly I've used others like Matt Geo and Andy Lawson who are amazing um, over here but um, Lance is around the corner and I feel super comfortable to mm. uh, just kind of try new different things and kind of just let myself be free in the studio with Lance. Um, so it's, yeah, it's good. Talking yeah. about working with Lance and working with producers, what's your creative process like? Like, is it organic where you go in there and you're able to just, you know, create on the spot or do you prepare a lot before you go in? Um, a bit a bit of both. What One of my favourite things I've done only, only a couple of times is actually um, kind of take a, take a bit of a risk and a punt on myself and actually pay for studio time, but mm-hmm. go in with, with nothing planned. Mm-hmm. And um, I've got a, a couple songs that I've released. Um, one, the main one was a song called Wildfire that I had out. And um, I had a, a rough kind of feel in mind, but I, I didn't go in with any any lyrics or any any beat or any, any guitar riff or anything. And we just, uh, we did it all on the spot and we got about 80% of the song done kind of just, just in one day and all the lyrics written and stuff and things like that. And then, um, so it was just a case of refining it and then went back in and uh, that, that was a really refreshing creative process to yeah. go through. Um, Cause it's, it's super nice to have um, things that uh, you've planned and you've worked on, um, but then being free and just letting kind of music come out and just record it in that moment, it, it kind of retains the energy a little bit in a way. So I really like that process. I haven't done it as much as I've as I'd like to since, but um, yeah. It's, uh, any any other musicians that I know, I'd recommend that as a, a, a process to try occasionally. Yeah. Sounds like working hard is very ingrained in you. Like I'm not sure where that came from through family or you know just came in through you as your character, but it sounds like you you're not afraid of hard work. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I certainly have my lazy traits, that's for sure. Be, the, if, if any friends listen to this, they'll be like, oh, <laughs> no, but I, th- I think you've got to have the you've got to have the light and the dark, right? I, I like having a really strong work ethic and I, I love working hard and to the point where you, you're exhausted, but you've got to keep pushing through. Like, I love those moments, like especially being on the road as a touring musician, when you've got to wake up bleary eyed at 7am mm. to drive eight hours to get to the next gig, then play another show and then... And then sometimes I got freelance work to do kind of after I play the show and it's oh, just wow. super exhausting, but in the most like enjoyable way. Um, so when I come back home, like I just like giving myself the time to be super lazy. And I've recently discovered afternoon baths. Oh, me too. <laughs> oh, me too. And I fill it uh, with salt water. <laughs> yeah. You get the Epsom salt in yes, there. Yes, I do. I yeah. bought it in bulk. Get my, uh, get my salt lamp in there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I just actually that sets me up for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, but it's self care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you with that one. Excellent. Um, well, I was going to actually go. So you 
you read my mind. I was going to actually transition then and ask you what are the practices that you integrate in your day because we are on One Space Love that, you know, not necessarily spiritual practices but practices that are helping you to, to have creative flow. So one of them could be, you know, having a bath, but what else is are you passionate about that helps you stay in that zone? Um, oh, running and, yep. and fitness is definitely the pretty much the number one i think mm. for that um it's just or just any state change i guess mm -hmm. um but which i find like cardiovascular exercise and um, like running is like getting a good sweat and getting your blood pumping for at yep. least kind of 20 minutes um come back from that and it, your brain's in a different state to be able to operate i think um so yeah anything like that um i love the cold showers and, and mm. ice baths when i can as well uh, talking about changes of state um and uh, yeah um but also um I've, I've been trying to get up um because i'm not so much a morning person typically and <laughs> um, but recently um i got it from a um, uh, mate of mine, Kim Churchill, um, he he gets up a lot to to write before the sun comes up. Yes, um, and he he's just very prolific with it. And I'm definitely more more lazy on this front. But um, I'm trying to get up at kind of it was five thirty in summer, but now kind of six thirty maybe, and uh, light a candle, get a tea on the go, and just try and try and write and just let words and lyrics come out, um, which is nice. And um, I'd like to do it more often, but um, it's it's quite difficult to get in a routine of that. Um, but that's that's one um, little practice I've been doing recently, um, and also just trying to make make a bit more routine with playing guitar. Um, it can be quite easy to i, I mean i always play it it's um but to try and make a routine of it and kind of practice regularly or write regularly um is is, is quite difficult so i've been trying to make a point of that recently and uh, i did something in the last in our last lockdown over here about a month ago of writing a new kind of guitar a percussive guitar piece every day yeah which was really beneficial that sparked up a lot of new little um little fires for me so it was, it was good yeah mm. hmm well, I was going to ask you now, talking about guitar, you are you also know some of my favorite artists that I've got to work with with One Space um, events, Tijuana Cartel, Kelly Dad, Wild Marmalade. Oh, yeah. Where did you cross paths with all of these incredible musicians along your oh, musical journey? <laughs> incredible musicians indeed. I know, yeah. Um, oh, all those guys are fantastic. Um, yeah. um, I first of all met Kelly Dad. Um, who I, 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 owe, I, I owe a lot of, of kind of anything I've been able to do to, to Caladad and to, to Jason in particular. Oh. Um, they, were, they were so helpful with me when I was kind of a little young, hungry terrier trying to make my way kind of mm. a little bit higher in the music scene. And uh, I, actually, I originally started doing some poster and tour artwork for Caladad. That's how okay. we met. They were, they were in Perth touring. This is probably four or five years ago. Um, looking for some um, and they needed a last minute poster art and someone recommended me for it and uh, I did their poster art and I was like oh you're playing the Rosemount in Perth next week like do you need another support act and like oh we've got we've got two support acts already like cheers and I was like oh but can I just come play like 15 20 minutes yeah <laughs> and that's a Jason determination like, that's, and Jason just like that's the work ethic we appreciate in Calabad so I, I got to open for them um, yeah, and then from there we became really good oh. friends, and um, I ended up kind of doing a lot of the support here in WA, and then I joined them on quite a few shows over east. Um, kind of, yeah, a lot, a lot of the east actually, and mul multiple times as well. But just, just because it worked so well, and we had such a good time on the road, and became good friends, and I, I love those boys dearly, and I'm very grateful for kind of all the little legs up they gave me, and little hints and tips along the way and stuff. Um, yeah, so I met Caladad first, and then. Ended up supporting Tijuana Cartel a few times, kind of through through meeting yep. them through the Caladad boys. And and um, Tijuana Cartel have helped Cali Dad a lot. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's almost you know, those, like the, yeah, yeah. Those guys have been going a, a while. Uh, I guess Tijuana they've they've got a um, a great following and a, um, a great legacy in mm. the, the Australian music scene. Yeah. Well, I interviewed Cali Dad, and I, they were very. They were talking like you about Tijuana Cartel, so it's just beautiful yeah, yeah. to hear you talk about Cali Dad the same way because it's like they're paying it forward. Yeah. And and now you you've also got to play with Sio Mullumby and mm. on Marmalade. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We met uh, we met about two year 
it would be just before co- all the COVID stuff happened. Um, okay. We met at a festival in New Zealand. It was a, a New Year's Eve yes. festival in New Zealand that we were playing. And mm-hmm. Cy was playing with, with Mild Marmalade over there. And then, uh, yes, yeah, so we, we met there. And then he's like, oh, I've just moved back to Perth. Let's catch up for a coffee. I was like, yeah, yeah. cool. That sounds good. And it, you keep, when you're kind of touring, you hear that quite a lot. That, you know, you will catch up. And it, you know, the intention's there, but it doesn't always happen. But yeah. we actually ended up catching up. And I think we bumped into each other in a, in a bar in, Fre- in Fremantle. And then we ended up hanging out. And then we had a jam. Um, and then we ended up playing some shows together. And then we ended up playing some more shows together. And it's just been a very organic, super fun kind of uh, journey with Sai. Yeah, I'm very grateful to be kind of involved with him and his musical legacy as well, because his um, his journey has been um, very impressive. Yeah. Yes, I mean his mind. I remember when mm. we worked at the Opera House, and his um, set list is actually was drawn out graphically, like it was. Yeah, his mind. So I had a set list. Well, wow. it wasn't a set list. It was a graphic <laughs> picture that we had to work with when to bring them all on the Amazing. stage, and it, and he was on stage. It was a progressive loop that he was bringing the artists. It was like a dance, like bringing the artists in and out. There was no break. There was no pause in the performance is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, right. So his mind just so inspiring and incredible. Ah, He's he's so playful in in, like in every way. Yeah, and he's a big kid. He's joyful. joyful. Exactly, yeah. How did you get to meet Kim Churchill and and, um, get to work with him? Um, Me and Kim met at um, Nanup Music Festival just, just March gone. Okay. Um, through a, um, a mutual friend, uh, one of my best mates, uh, Luke Fox, another artist, um, who who knows Kim well, and then um, we all kind of hung out at Hannah, hung out at Nanak Music Festival, and um, and there was a certain level of just stoke at this festival in particular because it was the first music festival back after the lockdowns and stuff. So mm. it was just the energy of that place the whole weekend was just everyone was just beaming with smiles. Um, and then, yeah, we, we got on really well, me and Kim, and um, we had some good laughs and talked music and just took the piss out of each other and found a, a very kind of mutual um, friendship there. Mm-hmm. And um, and then he was coming back over to uh, to WA and just asked if I wanted to go and support him on his tour from uh, Exmouth, uh, no, sorry, Broom to Exmouth and back. Um, yeah, so we kind of got in a camper van for a couple of weeks, and Fantastic. it was great, great playing shows there. It was, it was um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go because he's enjoying doing the really intimate kind of gigs at the moment mm-hmm. um and yeah my set's kind of pretty pretty high energy kind of rocky and um, so it was nice to try and kind of chill it out a little bit and sit into a more intimate kind of space and it worked really well we had a great time yeah so I've got a lot of respect for Kim because mm. I heard one of your tracks you even got mixed by um Tijuana Cartel so there there is like a, a quite an upbeat element to your to your music as well for the listeners to know you like yeah, playing with re- it, yeah. Oh, totally, yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, strong hands. Okay. Yeah, they did. They did a remix of that about um, about three years ago, two or three years ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love the. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm on stage. I just love kind of treating it like a. I was talking about fitness before, but kind of treating it like a workout almost, and just just emptying the the bucket and just like wringing the rag out on stage and just feeling exhausted it by the time I come off I don't know I love it um, yeah. I, I, I love I love delicate gentle music as well but when it comes to playing guitar for me I just I just love kind of making it a bit of a, um yeah adrenaline work out. Yeah, yeah totally yeah. totally mm. well, let's go there now to Wim Hof ah. how did you get introduced to his incredible breath work and the ice baths and you know how did that come up in your life Oh, me, me and Wim have been friends for years. Yeah, we, we go way back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. I hope, I hope to meet him one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't remember how I came across it. Um, yeah, I can't remember how I first discovered him. But I, I've been doing the, his, his breathing and, his, and the ice baths and, and cold exposure for, um, yeah, three, three, three or four years now, perhaps. Okay. And um, again, nothing that I keep super routine at, but I try and do it regularly and, and, and enough. Um, but it's amazing. Again, yeah. it's a, just a full, both of them are full state changes. Um, so if you, you know, anybody's ever feeling a bit of a creative lull or they're feeling a bit down or they're, I don't know, just the breathing or the ice baths or running or whatever I, I find is the perfect kind of click out of that. Yeah. Out of anxiety and out of all those anxious Everything thoughts. Yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's not a, a forever fix, but it's a, it's a good kind of push in the right direction for sure. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. 
And well, with I know a lot of people um, that, that work with the breath work and the ice baths. But did you go to a particular mm. retreat and do it, or did you you know have a no. facilitator, or did you learn online and like you taught yourself guitar? Did you teach yourself the Wim Hof? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming across as a bit of, a bit of a loner here. Hey. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just yeah, just just learned it myself. Um, I mean. It's easy. The, the breathing yep. is online that you can just press play and just follow immediately, pretty much. Um, and the yeah, the ice baths. Um, first one I did. Yeah, I think the first one I did was just a, a few bags of ice in a in a yes. cold bath. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the past few winters, actually, um, I don't know what color the they are over over east, but the the green waste bins with the green lids. Uh, yeah. Where you put all where you put all your branches and leaves in to get taken we out. We have that. Um, yep. Yeah, so I use that wheelie bin, uh, fill it with water, and then uh, that stays in winter. It stays pretty cold, and then put a few few bags of ice in that. And it's if I was a couple of inches taller, I wouldn't fit. But it's like the perfect <laughs> snug fit. And um, yeah, so sit and have a little whiskey whilst I sit in a in a wheelie bin full of ice. <laughs> Is this on your own? <laughs> um, oh, I sometimes get some mates to come and join for that. Um, I've, I've done that on my own as well. No, no, yeah. it's good. Um, but then I also have a friend around the corner um, from me in Scarborough here um, who's converted like a, a an oh. industrial chest freezer um, and he sealed it and that thing is so cold. Mm. When you open that up for the first time uh, in the morning or whatever, there's like a block of ice about this thick that you have to crack open with a like a metal mallet. Um, and I think we're doing that this afternoon, actually. I haven't done it for a while with them. Um, but yeah, that thing is super cold. That is commitment. <laughs> oh, it's the yep. best feeling. It's so good. Mm. And now you've got to these tracks that have just been released. When did they get mm. released, actually? Um, well, so Strong Hands and Run feature Wim Hof. Yes, yeah. And so when did you um, release these tracks? Yeah. Um, well, both of those tracks are existing tracks of mine, um, yep. which Strong Hands, I think, was 2017 and, okay. and Run run was a year ago just over a year ago um yeah and then i um so you reworked was, them think, yeah okay. um, so the tracks themselves have pretty much stayed the same um but i've just um so run had my vocals taken out and i had um a Eamon dilworth from tijuana cartel and did some trumpet over that um, yep. um which and that's kind of how it started i was i was doing a remix of run and was creating the trumpet parts that he'd send over and uh, i was like oh I feel like in the in a few sections I could do with another element, and I just done some um, some wind breathing um, beforehand. It's like oh, I'll try sample his voice from his breathing exercise, and it worked so well. So and like well. kind of like conceptually and sonically, um, it kind of fitted mm -hmm. with the because um, running the song was about running and obviously breathing and stuff with wind, so it worked worked really well. And then I created the track, and it's like oh, this sounds great. I'm stoked to this, but. I don't know if I can put this out. Um, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to have to try and ask permission. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent a while kind of digging around to find, like, I, I knew I wouldn't be able to get in contact with him directly. Um, but then I found his his management, who's his son, actually. Yes. And I managed to get in touch with his son, Enam. And um, he's like, cool, man. Just he was full of, as you'd expect with, yeah. you know, being Wim Hof. So he's like, hey, man, cool. All right, I'll check it out soon. And I didn't hear, for, hear back for a while. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to hear about this. And then um, and then got a got a, a message back saying that they were happy for me to use his um to use his voice, and I was like, oh, you know, whatever you want in return. He's like, nah, man, we don't want anything. Like, you're spreading oh. the love, like you know, and all blessings to you and stuff like that. And it was just amazing. And um, so I was, I still can't believe it that I've managed to kind of do that and be able to put some music out with his voice on it because his his voice is just as you know as much of his as his, his journey and his legacy and his voice is just amazing. It's just so rich and powerful and inspiring, yeah. and yeah, there's a vibration it's, to it. It's 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 very calming and soothing. Totally. Mm. Mm. As with your That's song, been, when when was that moment when you got the yes to go ahead? I was in voice? a I was in a pub in Margaret River. I'd been okay. doing a show the the night before, and I was watching someone else's show the night after. And, um, and I remember I was actually with some people and I was like, yes. So then I didn't have to explain what I was so excited yeah, about. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I was very excited when I got that message. Yeah. Email came through. Yes. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Oh, those are the moments to hold on to, aren't they? They're oh, just moments totally. when you get complete confirmation that what you're doing is, you know, is on the right track. 
exactly yeah yeah i was listening i mean i've i've what drew me to interview was listening to those tracks as well um but i was listening to those tracks again this morning with my chaotic morning that i've had and actually listening to the the layers of the music with the trumpet in the run track as well as those vocals coming through it actually got me to just sit and breathe it's it's so beautifully done and composed so thank you thank you Mm. oh great i'm glad it was of service to you in a certain way i'm glad it was very much of service to me excellent thank you (laughs) and um and so Strong Hands is the track that you mentioned that, that Tijuana Cartel had already, um, you mentioned earlier, was that the one that they remixed? Yeah. So then you added in a sample of Wim Hof on that as well. Um, no, this doesn't um, have any of the Tijuana Cartel remix to it. This oh, no, is the original, no. this is the original okay. version with, yeah, with Wim Hof on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of the, the third version of Strong Hands. Yeah. Least, yeah. Yeah. And what is exciting you at the moment? Uh, musically? Mm. Well, anything about um, musically. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've been. Um, <laughs> I know. Um, music, musically, um, yeah, I've been, I've been back in the studio again recently. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I kind of gave myself a challenge over the last lockdown of writing a kind of a new like percussive tapping guitar piece every day. Yeah. Um, which was which was great to do. I think I did about ten or twelve days in a row, um, and. <laughs> I hate to say it, but like putting myself in a routine musically actually like really benefited me. It kind of it let a lot of stuff come out. Um, so I, I went straight back in the studio to try and start kind of putting those together. Mm. Um, so that the idea I want for that is to have like kind of quite technical gu- acoustic guitar playing with more more so than my previous um, songs, more uh, like singer songwriter kind of storytelling lyrics mm-hmm. in a way, which is something I've not done too much and um, with my previous um, material it's a bit more kind of ambiguous and mm. uh, and and it's I guess it's usually been more focused on the guitar but I'm trying to kind of focus on both a bit more um for these tracks so I'm, I'm back in the studio at the moment doing that and it's it's really refreshing mm, um, it's exciting kind of, yeah it's pushing me a little bit and it's um, yeah it's feeling nice I'm kind of writing nostalgically about home uh, about mm-hmm. where I grew up and things I would do as a kid and things like that so it's Aww. it's really nice yeah and that writing in the morning will help that, you know, streamline writing in the morning will help that, that come out. Well, yes, I, I must I haven't done it in a, in a couple of weeks, but I was, I was in a good routine there. But then I think you know, I always I was snapped myself out of routine somehow. I think, it went, I think it went away and then all of a sudden routine was gone. Was gone. So I need to try and get myself back into that, mm. that routine. Yeah, because that would definitely help. It mm. does, yeah. Ah. Do, you, do, you, do you write much at all? Are you a... Uh, I yeah. do. And you, it's interesting. Do you keep routine in it? I was going to say that we, I'm in Sydney and once I interviewed Lisa Mitchell just before we went into this harsh lockdown. Mm-hmm. And yes, I did write, but I do also get out of routine. It's so normal. You know, yeah. we have to be gentle on ourselves. But she, rec- she reminded me of The Artist Way, the book, which I've had on my shelf for decades and I've never, oh. I've mm-hmm. never finished it. And just after editing that interview, I was like, I am going to make commitment to myself to get up before my children and just stream, just let the writing come out. And I have filled yeah. a whole book. I have been committed to oh, it wow. every single day. And I have my cup of tea, Amazing. you know, don't always light the candle, but like to light the candle. And that's my time and no one's allowed to bother me. So Wonderful. it's, it's, inc- it's so, he- and then I meditate. I have a, um, mm-hmm. a mindfulness practice, even if that's just sitting in stillness. Um, but yeah it really sets you up to to just brain almost brain dump and being a creative person it re- really does help yeah but, oh good on you that's 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 a great achievement so like, it's quite hard to do really it is did you did you um were you able to just let your like a stream of consciousness come out because yes. i find myself kind of judging like oh i don't want to write about that again but so i'm trying to force myself to just allow just anything and everything to come out on the page were you able to do that successfully completely yeah yeah oh good nice so once once i find for me once i just surrender to the mind shatter and come back into you know that breath that you're talking about that you connect with Mm. with wim hof and Mm. just take all the judgment away and just write freely without thinking it's incredible what comes out and don't read back over it (laughs) necessarily (laughs) because it's mumbo jump i don't even know what i'm saying half the time i jump from one thing to another um but it's yeah wicked you can interview me any more questions you have for me (laughs) so many (laughs) 
All right, go and shoot me. One more. No. <laughs> oh. Well, no. what's uh, okay? What's your um, we're talking about practice before. What apart from that practice, what's your what's your your main practice in life that you would I don't know that you, that you find consistent? Meditation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you connect, you say that, yeah yeah when you said meditate when you said meditation before i could just feel your kind of yeah your love for it in your voice yeah yeah it's because i have i it was i suffered a lot from panic attacks and anxiety and mm. to me you know meditation or mindfulness or stillness you know and nature i would say nature is the other thing mm. i like putting my feet on the ground i like getting in the ocean um, and I'm really struggling in lockdown about that, uh, not getting to the yeah. beach. <laughs> um, oh. So I was talking to my mum about it this morning and saying it just feels really restricting that I can't just drive and put my feet in the ocean and my body, you know. And, mm. um, yeah, she, she was just saying how it is a real lesson for us to just really notice what's around us. So I'm noticing at the moment. I think my number one is just connecting with nature in whatever form that is. So this morning I mm. literally took my shoes off and walked around my backyard mindful, you know, with every yeah, yeah. mindful of every step some, some grounding, um, yeah. and the baths every afternoon, you know, that's my submersion into water. Only, only hot baths. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm not, I was introduced to Wim Hof many times and had opportunities to do the workshop, but, my constitution, I haven't been able to do it. I will, I, I'm willing to give it a go. I can do the breath, but yeah. I can't submerge in submerge myself in ice. <laughs> Fair. I know. Sorry, Fair. listeners. I interview many people. Ash Grunwald loved it and we had a big chat about it. And his wife, Danny, and I were like, yeah. no, it's not for us. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, she's a huge fan. Yeah, he stuff. is. Yeah. yeah. We had a chat. Mm -hmm. Um and back in my, uh, he was one of my first interviews. And then he came back on last year when I was in, when we were in lockdown. Um, cool. Yeah. So. Another, another hero of the, of the scene, another man of a big legacy in the Australian yeah. music scene. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. fantastic. He is. He's definitely adapting to the new ways was our chat that we did on, on Space Love. Mm. So how I could keep chatting with you. It's really nice chatting with you. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> um, how can we support you um, doing what you love at, in these times right now? How can people connect with you? Um, oh, all the usual ways. Um, all my music's on Spotify and, and Apple Music and um, all the usual suspects. And I post everything on Facebook and Instagram uh, about shows and new music coming up. And yeah. Um, yeah, if anybody feels like it, that's where it's at. I, I kind of Beautiful. Yeah, I, I try not to force anything too much. Just if, if people connect with it, then feel free to. But yeah. Yeah. I really recommend everyone check out these new mixes with featuring Wim Hof that are available. Yeah. We will share them. That'd and be great. let's finish up by asking you um, when. Um, you know, travel seemed to be a very big part of your your journey and something that you were passionate about and it's what led you over to Australia. Um, mm. How are you feeling about what's ahead for us? Like how are you feeling with all of that, with travel? and? Um, yeah, kind of I have a few moments where I kind of feel a bit, um, a bit stationary and I kind of, mm. um, even though I, I'm running frequently, um, but there's, there's something about... The movement of being on the road and just that kind of constant hum um, for long drives and kind of missing that a little bit. Mm. Um, but in Western Australia, and there's plenty of long driving to be done here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm kind of missing the the new towns and and you know, getting back over east and getting back to New Zealand and getting back to the UK to to do shows and see family and friends, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm aware that there's not too much I can do about it mm. um so i'm just making the most of where i am and and feeling content with that like i mentioned at the start i guess um yeah but i'd like to keep traveling as soon as i'm able to yeah, yeah. it comes down to mm. gratitude of where you are at this moment isn't it yeah. which i think yeah. is full circle to what we started for you seem very Speaking grateful well done. <laughs> yeah and very content in where you are and i'm really I, i'm really looking forward to hear 
what's emerging out of you at the moment. It sounds like you're in a new space hmm. um, with mind, body and soul. And I'm interested to see what it is that comes out in musically for you. So please oh, stay in good. touch with thanks. me. Hmm. Shall do. For sure. Hmm. Well, thanks so much for having me, Steph. It's been a, a lovely chat. Thank you so much for joining me today on One Space Love. Pleasure. Thanks, Steph. Nice one. Your space, my space, our space. One space love, one space love, one space love.